Diane, you have worked for some of the most creative people. <clears throat> well, I worked for Giancarlo Minotti, uh, Charles Wadsworth, uh, working with Ellen Stewart of La Mama, and then I worked for Isama Noguchi. They each had a very personal and very big vision. The vision itself never wavered. They really, each of them were set on a path, probably from childhood. I think they all felt that what they were doing was very important, and not just important to themselves, but important to the world. They shared a sense that there was nothing, that the only thing that held you back was yourself. They just didn't really take no for an answer and didn't let anything get in their way. And it wasn't even about money. You know, they could, some of them had money and some of them didn't. Some of them made money through their work eventually, although that tended to complicate things. You go to a museum and you're standing in front of a Jackson Pollock and inevitably some woman will come in with another woman and one will turn to the other and say, well, my kid could do that. And probably there could, could do something like that but, the dis but what distinguished Pollock is that he did something that was not cons hadn't been seen before. And rather than a kid doing it accidentally and the mother throwing it away, this person had some feeling, I don't know where it comes from, that this belongs on the wall of a museum or in a collector's home. But I think it comes down to some initial spark of talent, which I think a lot of people have. Then it gets winnowed down a little bit to, okay, I'm going to pursue this and do it no matter what, whether I, you have to do it for the product, not for the gain that the product might bring you. And then it gets winnowed down still further to being dogmatic about it and believing it and, and continuing it, finishing it to, to a point of perfection, at least by your standards, and then letting go of it. 